Thank you. Okay, let's let's get going then. Uh, this is a, uh, an OAuth interim meeting. Uh, this is November 2nd. So uh, because we have a, a long list of people that probably this is their first time attending an IETF meeting, I just want to take a minute here to talk about uh, the note well. Uh, for the IETF, uh, this note well applies to those interim meetings, meaning that you agree that... Uh, you will follow the procedures uh, that the IETF put together around uh, participating in the IETF. And also you have to um, comply to the uh, patent uh, and, and patent disclosures. Um, and um, to understand that anything that you say or contribute right now um, will apply uh, and, and take, um, like be, be recorded and maybe also posted in, in public, right? So make sure uh, everyone that, that you understand this and and, um, um, and and make sure you understand this before you contribute anything to to the to this uh, discussion. Um, so that's that note well. Um, so we have um, today we'll, talk, we'll be talking about is logged in and web ID, but we have still one more meeting um, that will be talking about DPOP and that will be in November 30th. And now, today's meeting will be um, talking about uh, the motivation and challenges of uh, those initiatives. And we will spend most of the time discussing those. The goal is not really to dig deeper into uh, the details of those uh, initiatives. Uh, I've sent um, two um, links to two great presentations about those details. So we will not go through those again here. Uh, but we will focus on, again, the big picture and the challenges and have a discussion and maybe uh, try to come up with a way of, uh, forward. Uh, I'm not expecting this meeting to be uh, the conclusion for all those discussions, probably at the, uh, the beginning of this discussion. So I'm expecting that we'll have a uh, follow-up meetings and we can schedule more meetings uh, we, we, when needed. Um, so that's that's all I have uh, on my side. So I'll I'll hand it to uh, Vittorio and, um, and George to take us through uh, their slides. Before I do that, any comments, questions? Okay, Vittorio, uh, it's it's uh, it's yours right now. Should be able to share. All right. Can you see my enormous desktop? Yes, we can. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Rifat. Buongiorno, everyone. Uh, um, Vittorio from Zero, presenting with George from Verizon. Um, as uh, Rifat mentioned, our goal here is really to elicit the discussion rather than uh, educate. However, we will still uh, give uh, an ultra quick glimpse about the meat of the things that uh, we are discussing. In terms of agenda, uh, we are going to spend a, a moment taking the first two points, as in like uh, some uh, distilled down details about uh, what these logged in and web ID initiatives are about, and uh, uh, some idea about uh, how they are impacting and how they will impact the work and the applicability of the guidance that we generate in the context of, of uh, working group. And then we have a, a couple of ideas on how, uh, the, as a working group, we can influence the process. And those are just ideas for seeding the discussion, like they're by no means uh, developed, as just brainstorming. And now let me just give you an uh, ultra quick uh, idea of uh, what's going on. We know that uh, uh, tracking is uh, a big problem today, and uh, the browser vendors like to say that they have these uh, classification problem, which is uh, whenever uh, a website uses low-level primitives like redirects, uh, link decoration, uh, third-party cookies, and similar, the browser doesn't know whether those primitives are used for tracking the user or if they are used for doing perfectly legitimate stuff, such as uh, single sign-on across multiple applications. And so there are like st steps that browsers are taking for containing the ability of trackers to actually track users. And uh, those steps uh, actually involve limiting the use uh, of basic primitives that we do use uh, as well. 
um, the browsers are aware of this uh, uh, complication. And so they are proposing APIs that uh, are directly in the browser, addressing some of the scenarios that uh, we need from the identity perspective. And once they will be satisfied that they achieved what they are uh, trying to do, let's say providing APIs that will help us do identity uh, as opposed to just using uh, low level primitives as today, they will actually go ahead with what they have in one. And so, uh, George, in a second, will enumerate some of the possible consequences, such as, for example, cookies no longer existing. And our challenge is that for what we observed so far of those initiatives, those initiatives are strict subsets of what we want to achieve in identity. And they also um, start from principles that are not necessarily aligned with uh, what we know, like uh, what we normally operate on, such as, for example, the ability of a browser to always be completely informed of every aspect that is going on uh, through identity interactions. And uh, so the, the challenge is that uh, if we actually don't contribute somehow to the scenarios that are addressed by two, then uh, once they cut the light for the existing primitives, will be stranded, our users will be stranded. So this is a super high level view of uh, what's going on. Now, let me hand this over to um, George that will uh, walk you through some of the details. And George, you tell me when you want me to change uh, slides. Sure. sure. Okay, so we'll just go through a couple of these. The, the ones on this page here are, um, some of them are already in, in effect, right? Same site. If if you haven't been affected by it, right, you have probably seen effects on identity flows where, um, you know, basically uh, same site, I mean, uh, prompt equal none requests in iframes are breaking unless you explicitly tag your identity related cookies as same site equal none, which of course doesn't help you in certain browsers where the, those things are sort of ignored or when third party cookies are disabled you know, sort of across the board, right? Because effectively a same site equal none cookie is a third party cookie. Um, so so we've already seen this. Uh, we've seen other cases already out of intelligent tracking protection efforts where you, the user needs to be engaged with the IDP on a frequency basis. Otherwise the IDP cookies go away. So, um, so basically you'll, you'll start seeing interstitials in the single sign-on. So single sign-on is no longer silent or seamless. Get an interstitial. I think there's been a number of places in Australia that sort of had to do this because you know a vast array of domains all using the same single sign-on provider and the single sign-on provider domain was separated from those other domains. So the user wouldn't interact with the single sign-on provider domain enough, right? And the cookies would go away, and then the user would have to re-log in, right? So now you you may get sent over there. Hey, do you want to stay logged in within that time frame to keep the, um, you know, to keep the cookies fresh? Uh, bounce tracking protection is something that's in Safari. It's actually uh, coded, um, and in the latest versions, effectively what it's looking at is if domain one redirects the user to domain two and gets a redirect back, right? And that same domain is seen to do that redirect to more than 10, you know, that, well, the domain two is sort of like your tracker or your SSO IDP. If there are more than 10 in Safari, if there are more than 10 properties that redirect to that entity and then get redirected back, it gets classified as a bounce tracking site and then your IDP cookies get um, stuck in same site equals strict jail, which can be problematic, requires an extra sort of redirect to yourself to pick up your cookies. Um, so, and then obviously it's, it's not just third party cookies. Um, you know, domains that are classified as tracking domains have limits put on their first party cookies. Um, Firefox uses um, a, a fixed list from disconnect.me um, uh, Safari attempts to use machine learning in browser to determine which domains are tracking and which ones aren't. So these are sort of, you know, the, the privacy protections that the browsers have put in place, you know, 
to to help protect us online from what the ad people are doing in, in building, you know, the targeted um, ad targeting profiles about us, but they do sort of bleed into already the identity work that we do um, or authorization, OAuth or OpenID Connect. So let's go to the next slide. So WebID um, is in, intentionally trying to uh, preserve identity federation and um, Sam, who's driving this, is on the call, so he can correct anything I say that's wrong. Um, but uh, fundamentally, they're looking at sort of um, solving three problems. Uh, one of them is the ad targeted ad targeted tracking, um, and basically the way that happens today in many cases uses the exact same primitives that identity federations use. RP collusion. This has to do with multiple RPs getting a globally correlatable identifier and talking about the user behind the user's back. Um, globally correlatable identifiers from an identity perspective tend to be things like phone numbers or email addresses. And then there's the classic sort of IDP privacy leakage problem of you know, the IDP knowing where the users, you know, knowing where the user has asked to be logged into before the user agrees to log in. Um, so they're not trying to solve the problem of if the user says, yes, I want to log in, the IDP knowing the user logged in there, but just that sort of leaking that um, at the beginning of the authentication request rather than at the end. Um, the, the focus as far as you know, the primary focus, you know, that, that drove the initial sort of uh, proposal or explainer is um, you know, sort of a normal consumer on the web, navigating the web, accessing content and services that they're interested in. Um, there have been a number of issues um, added, academic issues, what I'm calling first party SSO, which would sort of be that like that uh, case in Australia where um, you've got multiple domains, but you know, all using a single identity provider. Um, I think there's small business, there's enterprise, there's lots of other use cases. And this gets to what Vittorio was talking about earlier, which is we need to expand the set of use cases um, that need to be solved from an identity perspective in the way that identity is used um, on the web today. And that link at the top is the link to the web ID explainer. And from there, you can get to all the issues and contribute um, uh, as you'd like. Next slide. So, is logged in is basically um, a proposal from Apple. And, and again, link there if you want to go read the explainer. The, in a nutshell, what they're looking for is the browser to have a state of user A is actively logged in to domain B. Um, and then you know user A logged out of domain B. So it's, it's really trying to just sort of maintain this state, this bit of is the user logged in there or not? I um, mean, they have a proposed API and whatever. The things that, and they have some proposals for federated authentication. Um, I would highly recommend people to go read that section and see if you interpret it the same way I do. Um, the way the federated login section of the explainer works is, um, uh, it is basically that, if I'm going to use a federated login provider, I have to already be logged in at the federated identity provider. And I don't think that's super realistic. Um, the key things I think on uh, for us from a scenario perspective really relate to this aspect of clear local storage and cookies on logout. So the explainer explicitly says, a user who explicitly logs out should clear all website data for the website. And, and there's two problems on this from an identity perspective. One of them is if you're just, you know, if, if you're an identity service and you deploy on the domains, you know, you deploy in the domain, so it's login dot, you know, mycoolsite.com, right? Then when the user logs out, it's likely mycoolsite.com data is cleared, which probably has a whole bunch of other stuff in it that's useful for first party tracking that isn't related to authentication. So it's unclear, you know, if they're going to just clear the one cookie that was the authentication cookie, but the explainer basically says they want to wipe all the data. So I think that's one problem. The second problem is 
we today, right, we leverage the mechanisms we have to establish trust for a given user using a given browser against um, a given, you know, relying party for to log in um, tends to be cookies. So if you wipe the cookies, you effectively put the user back in the untrusted flow. And almost always the untrusted flow is much more annoying to the user than the trusted flow. Um, so, you know, how do we maintain the sort of trust scenario if that mechanism, access mechanism goes away? The other thing about is logged in is the only ones that the browser will treat as sort of like being the browser knows that the user intentionally logged in are ones that basically use a mechanism the browser can validate. So right now, what's proposed is WebAuthn, something related to the credential API and password managers, which takes out a boatload of authentication mechanisms that are very convenient for users that are very strong, like a push notification to an authentication app on their phone, right? The browser won't see any of that, but it's a very strong authentication. And, and so I think that's another area where you know, we have to under we have to sort of figure out how do we help in this scenario browsers to know that that's a trusted, mediated, user intended, strongly logged in account, even though the browser saw nothing of the authentication. So I think that's it for those two. All right, great, thanks, George. Now, what like. First thing, like we know that these things uh, affect more stuff that is uh, upstream to us, so identity. Like as a working group, we normally uh, operate under the assumption that a session is in place and uh, a lot of the mechanisms described here pertain the session rather than, but so it's just like uh, if we are downstream uh, a river and someone is polluting it uh, closer to the source, we still suffer. So. Uh, I think that uh, it's useful for us to consider whether we want to do something about it, whether we want to like, uh, try to influence the course of this. And uh, there are a couple of uh, macro areas that we identified. One is uh, just use uh, our classic playbook, which is uh, there are working groups that describe this, like, uh, um, for example, is logged in uh, in the privacy working group uh, in W3C. And so, we can, as individuals or a nominating representative, participate in this discussion. And uh, if you go through the minutes of uh, meetings in the past, you'll see that Brian participated, George participated. So we can be there and we can supply our perspective as uh, things uh, develop. Um, this might work, but uh, it's going to be a bit of a uh, trench battle, a trench war as in uh, everyone will, like, it, it's it's going to be hard. Like, uh, I've seen also the way in which uh, some of these uh, uh, interactions go. And it's interesting that we come from very different cultures. Like, uh, it seems that the browser vendors have uh, very strong assumptions that are uh, dramatically different from the one that we have. So uh, it's not always easy to find common ground. The other thing that we were uh, uh, toying with, like, this idea, is uh, a lot of the things that are coming out from there seem to be derived from the fact that uh, the browser vendors don't really have a top of mind the scenarios of the NFA properties that we instead normally almost take for granted. And so one way in which we could deal with this could be to enumerate those scenarios and those properties, perhaps in like in a shared document, so that now we have uh, a section and a number that we can refer to whenever we participate in the discussions, and uh, we can uh, somewhat uh, uh, inform the browser guys that those things are there. And so the moment in which uh, there are measures that will uh, jeopardize those scenarios and those, pro those properties, this becomes an uh, explicit act rather than uh, an, uh, the result of the browser vendor not being aware of those scenarios. So somehow it might make it easier to communicate and also, once uh, something breaks and customers come after us, we can have a discussion about uh, why, the, why the breakage happened, which I don't know if you had experience with ITP and same site, but it wasn't fun for me to deal with that with customers. So those are uh, uh, the top level facts. 
now I would uh, recommend that we just open it to discussion and let's see what everybody thinks about this. Okay, before before we jump into the discussion, so I'm gonna post that link again. And if you haven't added your name to the list, please go and do that. Because I see uh, different numbers here. Like I see uh, about 36 people um, uh, on this conference, but I don't see that many uh, attendees. So please, if you haven't added your name, go and add your name. Uh, and uh, now to the discussion, if you wanna um, say anything, please add yourself to the queue. So um, go to the chat here and add yourself to the queue and you'll be able to, so we will take people uh, in order. Okay, go ahead, Danny. F feel free to join the queue, but just adding plus one to, to the chat. Anybody has any thoughts, any comments, any questions? Okay, Brian, go ahead. Not very profound, but I, I did want to correct one thing, Vittoria said that these are working groups within the W3C. Um, they're actually community groups, um, which I don't fully understand the difference thereof, but I do know one important thing is that they are not encumbered by the same uh, kind of membership qualifications that full blown working groups are. So, like, because they're community groups, anyone can join, I think. That's correct. Thanks. Sam Weiler at W3C. Yes, the privacy community group is open to all. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Aaron? And it's also the case. So, sorry, guys. Mike. Guys. Also, the case. Mike. Standards. Say that again, Mike. Go ahead. Please join I that. Also the, I believe it's also the case that community groups cannot create standards. Is that the case? Somebody wants to reply to that from W3C? That, that is the case. The, the community group will not produce recommendation track documents equivalent to the standards track RFC. Okay. Uh, so at some point, this work is likely to migrate to a working group. Um, that hasn't happened yet. Okay. Thanks. Uh, th th and that was Mike asking the questions or commenting. Yeah. Um, uh, Aaron. Yeah, this is Aaron. I was going to um, clarify that as well, but Sam did a great job. The community groups are, um, I, I've gone through a couple of these myself as well. Community groups are the sort of unofficial. Uh, place where anybody can form one, anybody can drum up interest, and it's kind of done under the W3C umbrella, but it doesn't really have any official standing as far as uh, rec track stuff goes. But a lot of the times that work then does get rolled up into a working group, which is part of the formal membership and can then produce rec track documents. So it's yeah, that's the that's where this work is happening right now. It does likely mean it will roll up into one of the formal working groups in the future. Okay, George. Um, I also sorry. Oh, sorry. I also wanted to just say, as far as these um, options go, that Victoria laid out, I I do support the idea of putting together a document listing the features that um, features that you know we all use that apparently the browser vendors are, are not super aware of. I think that's a great idea. Okay, thanks, Aaron. George. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think, you know, maybe something as it relates to identity will get big enough to be, you know, standards track. But so far, pretty much everything that's been discussed, like in the privacy community group around privacy features from browsers has been implemented and deployed by the browsers without necessarily becoming an official standard. Um, so it, it, I don't know that we shouldn't set the expectation that that all work done in the privacy group will not get deployed, you know, <laughs> into browsers that we use um, until it's been, you know, standardized or on some path to be standardized. Um, so it, you know, we just need to recognize that if the community group comes to a consensus about what they think is the right thing to do, it may very well 
appear in the browsers that we use on a regular basis without going through any standardization process. Okay, thanks, George. Uh, yeah, and I'm also in support of, you know, putting together a doc. Okay, Dick. Uh, I'm in support of putting together a doc, and I don't think we should limit ourselves to what we're using now. I think we should also uh, brainstorm and explore what features could the browsers provide to help us improve, you know, the security and experience to users. For example, you know, an issue that we often have is the identity of the client and the browser knows the site that is asking to be logged in or asking for authorization. And so if the brow if the client side is calling an API to the browser and then that comes over into the identity provider, the browser could tell the identity provider identity information, you know, such as URL from the client. Okay. Thanks, Dick. Uh, Sam? So, so while I like the idea of a document, let me also just encourage dialogue. The, the people that I see involved here mostly come with an engineering background. And, you know, I'm used to having these hallway conversations at the IETF if someone doesn't understand it and you go spend a half hour with them and they understand it better. And maybe you have to spend another hour with them and they understand it even better. But there are sincere folks here and they want to understand and they want to do things right. So, you know, documenting is great. Talking may be even better. And I noticed that Sam Gatto, um, one of the proponents, is here with us as well. So, right. <laughs> Some of the people we need to talk to are here with us at the moment. Oh, and obviously that's the reason we are having this discussion here. But I think a document will make sure that everyone is on the same page and what and we are not talking past each other, right? So it's very useful. So but but yeah, we'll take in there, Sam. Um, Jeff, you had some comment on in, in the chat there. Do you want to talk to that, or, or is that are you satisfied with that <laughs> with that comment there? Do you want to add anything yeah. to that? To that? Um, no, thanks. Okay, thank you, hey, Vittorio. Yeah, I wanted to also clarify an aspect that perhaps didn't come across, which is uh, we've been having this dialogue. Let's say that Sam has been uh, extraordinarily open. And uh, we have been uh, going back and forth many times and explored many of those aspects. However, <laughs> uh, some of these things uh, are like, uh, sometimes I, I believe that during uh, our discussions, we land uh, on places where uh, we seem to have really fundamentally different uh, assumptions, they, which is why I believe that having uh, a document of an artifact of some kind might make uh, some uh, of those things more solid, more evident. Uh, otherwise, uh, like uh, some of these things just get uh, lost. But definitely, most definitely, the dialogue and the mutual understanding is what we've been trying to achieve. This is just like uh, moving things up to the next level. OK, thanks, Vittorio. I, I see more and more support to the document, which, which is great. Um, Dick. Yeah, just on the document, obviously, I think we're all in favor of it, but it also enables us as a community to get rough consensus on what features we want, as opposed to, you know, a bunch of one on one point opinions and there isn't really consensus on what we want. So if we have a document, we've got clear consensus on the features that work, what we need, et cetera. And then we can have be much more organized as we chat to other people. Okay, Thank, thanks, Dick. Yeah, uh, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment that um, I do think it's also really important that even in the places where we identify that we need to, um, we do need to make changes and we do need to accept some of these new uh, restrictions and everything for for user privacy. Um, we also need to be really sure that there's going to be a, uh, a clear migration path, um, particularly for any long tail RPs that are out there. Um, my group in particular interacts with a lot of very long tail um, interactions, and I can see having uh, having problems with migrations that uh, might come out of this sort of thing, that uh, a clear migration path from the browser vendors and from the, the W3C working groups or, or to the community groups and potential working groups uh, becomes very important in the future. Yeah, good point. 
uh, Vittorio. So if uh, we actually uh, want to go ahead with a document, then uh, I think that uh, the same problems will be uh, voiced by other communities in the identity space. Like uh, I'd argue that the OpenID is even more uh, impacted than us. In fact, if you look at all the uh, all those proposals, they all talk about uh, establishing the session, which again, as I mentioned earlier, we are a bit downstream. And uh, I don't think it's very efficient for every group to come up with their own system. So. Uh, I don't know if there is a precedent, but like uh, I'm wondering whether it would make sense to make a pan group effort in which uh, OpenID, Kantara, and uh, these other people that are as affected as we are or more, we can actually band together with them. Like I don't know what are the bureaucratic administrative implications, but uh, I just wanted to bring this up. So I, I want a little bit understand this. What do you mean by band together? Like there is nothing. That will prevent anybody from joining those calls and, and contributing to any document on on the, a work group document here. Like, what did you see more than that? Like, what what is it that you meant or have in mind here? So what what I mean is, and again, sorry if I'm not uh, yet very clear on how the mechanics of a working group works, but what I mean is. The same call that we are having now, uh, I think we are likely to have a similar call with the OpenID Connect people. So if this document needs to live under some umbrella, like, uh, so first, are we fine with collaborating with others or are you saying that we should tell uh, Kantar and OpenID, if you want to participate, join the off to working group? Like I'm thinking more in terms of uh, the mechanics of how to put this document together making sure that the identity community has a voice. We are a part of the identity community, but we are not the entire thing. Yeah, I, absolutely. Uh, the goal is not like we, we are, we're happy to communicate or, or collaborate with any anyone, any other uh, community or groups. Um, we will probably have to discuss those, uh, like the, the ways to do that uh, later on, but uh, but yeah, absolutely. It's not, we're not <laughs> excluding, we're trying not to, trying to exclude anybody here, right? So um, the more, the, the better, right? For sure. Uh, okay. A anything else, uh, Vittorio? That's it. Okay. Uh, George said academic research communities as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Vladimir, David, okay. Okay, Any anybody has any comments, thoughts beyond what we've discussed so far? I see strong support for a document. So let's maybe start with a document and then maybe uh, we can discuss how to bring together OIDC and, and Kantara and others to collaborate together on this one, right? Sam, go ahead. Well, so I just wanted to uh, uh, reinforce support here for any form of feedback that you can provide. Uh, you know, the, the, there, there are a few of us, we, we were getting feedback from a lot of people. We struggle to respond to all or to digest all. We know that identity is a large world um, and it's not our intent to uh, ignore feedback. And so we'll take that as a gift. So if you prepare a doc to us, we will take that as a gift. We'll, we'll take feedback as, as something that we'll, 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 we'll digest meaningfully. Um, we, uh, we, as far as format or how that gets done from a process perspective, up to you to decide uh, whatever works best for you all. If you invite me to some of these, I would love to come and, and, and have some shared ownership of this so that maybe increases the chances that we'll, we'll, have, um, we'll have a, a you know, uh, you know, higher chance of, of, of converging. So um, I, I also wanted to uh, just kind of like give you the sense of just my, 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 my only ask is that you remain open, open, open minded and that you understand what the privacy atmosphere is today and uh, the context in which bronzes are coming from. Uh, so, you know, as much as we, uh, you know, you're, you're also digesting the other side of the equation here from a privacy perspective and you're, and you're internalizing that. And, and our goal is to preserve federation, but the parts that federation that, you know, are within, uh, you know, what, what one would, what would one from a privacy perspective? Um, and so, uh, you know, and as long as we can have a, a, 
a reciprocal or a two-way conversation, I would love to, to help as much as possible. So, so plus one to the effort to produce a doc, plus one to organize, invite me to those meetings uh, whenever you feel like I'm going to be constructive. Uh, don't invite me whenever you don't feel like I'm going to be constructive. But yeah, as long as, as, as soon as you have anything that you want to share or, or include us, I uh, would love to come and, and learn from you all. Yeah, and just, just to make clear, uh, the IDF process is, is open to anyone. Anyone can join, anyone can look at the discussion, uh, recording, whatever meetings, document, there is nothing that prevents anybody from joining those uh, those calls, right? So just to be clear, like I'm not familiar with, with the other organizations. I, I think that there's more restrictions there. ITF is wide open. So uh, you're welcome to join anytime. Um, yeah, so we, we're not trying to hide anything here, right? So just to be clear. Okay, uh, anybody else has any comments, questions? I, I think uh, clear uh, support for a document. So that, that's probably um, uh, the way we're, we're gonna go. Um, any any further comments, questions, clarifications that need to be done at this stage? Okay. Well, uh, if okay, volunteers, okay. Volunteers to go ahead, Jeff. Do you want to say more? The next question you should ask is who's going to write up this doc? So, well, I, I, I thought Vittorio and, and George have been leading this, and they, uh, they, that, that was my assumption at least that they will be writing that document there. But uh, Vittorio and George, uh, is, that, is that the correct assumption, at least from my perspective? <laughs> So I'm um, more than happy to uh, frame the thing as in like uh, uh, do the, but like, and of course I cannot speak on behalf of George. Uh, we did spend uh, time in here and I think that uh, we can uh, um, provide that uh, initial thrust, at least to identify the things that uh, for sure would be broken if things go forward. Uh, personally, I don't think I can uh, uh, lead it uh, because I don't know how much time I have, I, I need to go back to my bosses and see if they are okay with me spending a lot of time. But like, even if they tell me, yes, you can spend time, I cannot be the only author of it. So I hope that George will have time. I don't know that I'll have a ton of time either, but yes, I, I can definitely help, um, you know, with the framing. I would, I would want a, a community to, you know, I think if we can put together the way we want to document use cases, right, then it should be open for many people to contribute. Because um, for sure, the use cases that I'm going to be familiar with are not the use cases that, you know, I'm not gonna know what Brian's use cases are or what Aaron's Okta use cases are. So I think we have to um, use the entire community to submit those things. And then, you know, we can put it in some sort of structure that, you know, is, is easy for people to follow. Um, so I'm happy to work with Vittorio on, on the framing, you know, and, and sort of structure of the document and we can put some examples in there, um, but we're gonna need the entire community because um, I for sure do not have the, the global scope of all the ways we use identity across the web. The other thing that uh, I would add is, uh, I'm a bit burned from uh, what happened with the uh, IDP. If some of you guys might remember that a couple of years ago, I tried to put together a document in which we went back to Apple saying, hey, ITP is breaking this number of scenarios. And I tried to get uh, people to sign that document so that uh, companies that were affected by that uh, could uh, signal that, yes, they were uh, caring about this. And for this uh, document, it would be great, I think, if uh, vendors would say, this scenario is a scenario on which my main product is based. And so if you break this scenario, my business is going to be significantly affected. Uh, it would be great, but uh, I suspect that a lot of people uh, will just not do it because uh, complications with their uh, lawyers and similar. But at the very least, I think that if they would contribute, they, the meat of a scenario, even if they don't want to put their, uh, their logo on the side, that would be a, a good development. Okay, thank thanks, Vittorio. So, so 
just okay somebody is trying to join chime in here okay um just to make sure so so vittorio and george uh, you will start at least that document um is, is that and and then if we need to add more people to to that uh, we can we can add more volunteers that that might be interested in helping with that is that is that a fair kind of summary here um Victoria and George? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Suggesting to use GitHub. Okay. Okay. Any, go ahead, Sam. Well, I wouldn't say what would persuade Apple to do anything. Um, Victoria, I would love to see it spun not as this breaks my business. But this breaks my use case, right? Here's what I'm trying to do. Here's how I'm used to doing it, and this is what's breaking. Without putting the dollar signs on it. Go ahead, Victoria. Um, Go ahead, so, uh, of course, uh, yeah, I uh, like uh, ethically, I am uh, with you 100. percent And I think that from the technical perspective, that what we would, we, what we should strive for. Uh, however, uh, a very uh, concrete observation I had is that uh, very often some of these uh, decisions uh, can, uh, like, uh, the business implications do tip the scale. And, uh, like, so if you can see some of the things that uh, occurred recently with, like, uh, delaying the rollout of same site, delaying the on, uh, iOS 14 extra checks for uh, uh, privacy and similar, I think it would be naive to assume that uh, the uh, business does not tip the scale. So, of course, the goal of a document, I agree completely, should be clarifying the use cases. However, giving a sense of how prevalent that use case is versus an edge case that interests a subset of the community, I think it can really drive home how much damage this thing is going to make. Okay, thanks, uh, Vittorio. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Okay. Okay, I don't see any other people in the queue here. Uh, Mike O'Neill, do you want to kind of uh, clarify what you mean here? Oh, I just meant uh, it's not just a, a damage that can be done. It's a potential. It's a potential good out of a situation. You're getting a, correct. Getting yeah. a conversation going. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Hey, okay. Any other comments? Questions? Okay. Well. That was a great discussion, guys. And I think we have a, a way forward, at least uh, for now. Um, Vittorio and, and George will start working on a document. And if we need a follow-up meeting after that, we will ha be happy to schedule a, um, more meetings to continue this discussion. Uh, thank you all. I appreciate your time. And um, see you around. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank you.